On the 1st of October 1533, Mary I was crowned at Westminster Abbey. This was the first coronation of a female monarch in her own right. So she was a queen regnant as opposed to a queen regent who would be queen by virtue of being married to the king. <laughs> Mary was ruling in her own right. She was the daughter of Henry VIII by his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Technically, she succeeded Queen Jane, who had become a queen after Edward VI's death earlier in the year. But as we know, Queen Jane didn't last long enough between the death of Edward VI and the proclamation of Mary as queen to do any real ruling of the country, and she certainly didn't get a coronation. But Mary I did. So she is the first female monarch to be crowned at Westminster Abbey in her own right as Queen of England. The traditions and ceremony of an English coronation were followed, but with a couple of interesting changes. In the run-up to a coronation, the monarch would appoint new Knights of the Bath. But as this required a ceremony including naked men, baths and the monarch, it wasn't deemed appropriate for Mary to take part. And so the Earl of Arundel, her new great master of the household, took part in the rituals on her behalf. But Mary created something of her own ritual. She called upon her council members to attend her at the Tower of London. She knelt before them and spoke at length about how she had come to be their queen, about the duties that she saw that a king or queen had, and about the obligations that her and her council had to God and to her people. She remained kneeling for the whole time and the most powerful men of the country were moved to tears. The coronation procession took place the day before the actual coronation ceremony. The streets had been lined with rushes and tapestries and rich cloths had been hung about. There were pageants planned and set along the route which was taken by the Queen and her huge entourage which included the Princess Elizabeth and Anne of Cleves. Sunday the 1st of October was the day of the coronation and Mary made her way from the Tower of London by river to Westminster Palace where she changed into her first set of robes for the day. At 11am Mary made her way down the blue cloth which had been laid from Westminster Hall to the high altar of Westminster Abbey. She was preceded by the bishops of Winchester, Norfolk and Arundel who held the orb, scepter and crown. She was escorted to the coronation chair, the same one that is still in use today, that you can see in Westminster Abbey, and it was placed on top of a specially built platform. She was then taken to each of the four corners of the platform to be presented to the congregation. After prayers, she went behind a screen to the left of the high altar to change for the holiest part of the ceremony, the anointment with holy oil. Mary was concerned that none of this ceremony could be tainted and so the oils she had made for sure herself had come from Flanders. After that and back in her velvet robes, Mary sat on the coronation chair. She was presented with the spurs and a sword and was successively crowned with three crowns. The first one, that of Edward the Confessor, the second one, the imperial crown, and the third one, her own, which had been specially made for her. It was almost 5pm when Mary, now dressed in purple velvet and wearing her crown, processed back from Westminster Abbey to Westminster Hall, now laid up for the coronation banquet. During the banquet, Mary's champion, Sir Edward Dimmock, carried out the tradition of throwing down the gauntlet to anyone who believed Mary not the true sovereign. This was a good start for Mary. The crowds had cheered, her nobles were loyal, but no one for a moment expected that Mary alone was enough. She now would need to find a husband.